All right, welcome back everybody. Anybody that's new here, thanks for joining me today. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me. It's really loud with the water in the background. Um, if you guys recognize where I'm at, I came back, well, if you're not new, I came back to this spillway where I got a bunch of catfish um, a little while ago, probably like two, three videos ago. And uh, yeah, I wanna get some to eat. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep a couple eaters, try to get some monsters. But first I'm gonna go get uh, some bait. So I need to get some bluegills and some green sunfish. Uh, it's real simple, just fish along the rocks with some bobbers and a jig with a, a little chunk of worm. Uh, hopefully I'm gonna get a bunch of those and then catch tons of catfish today. So wish me luck. So I may have spent a little bit too much time playing with bluegills and stuff. Uh, I got bluegills, tiny sheep's head, uh, or drum, freshwater drum for you guys that fish down south, um, and some green sunfish. I actually caught two little dinky walleye, not on film, but uh, it was kind of funny because I was just jigging next to some rocks and the walleye smacked them like two inches under the surface of the water. That was kind of entertaining, but today's mission catfish so I already have my rig set up I just gotta pick a sinker which I'm probably gonna have to go with like a four ounce or more uh, the water is actually moving faster today than it was before and uh, yeah I think I'm gonna start with a sheep head so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut the back like cut them at an angle and then just nose hook them we'll see if the catfish down here like sheep's head or bluegills more comment below what would you rather use chunks of sheep's head or chunks of bluegills because I have both options but I would like to hear from all you cat fishermen what uh, what you like to use mainly for big big channels because that's what's around here okay so this is like a, I think that's a four out and then uh, I was saying ounces but this is 40 grams uh, got these online the best thing to do when you're fishing catfish I found is use these sliders because then you don't have your sinkers on them all the time it's a pretty neat little trick somebody taught me very thankful for that uh, so you can you can change your weights out real easy and then obviously it slides super easy on braid um, I do the swivel and then this is a 25 pound floral leader but like I said I'm gonna do half a sheep's head or drum whatever first and then we'll see how that goes okay so just ahead of the sheep's head first That didn't take long. How did he not have the bait? Didn't have the hook. Might have been a small one. Still got the bait. Oh. Back. Let me give him some slack here so you he can swallow that bait a little bit. Ugh.
got the bait that time. <laughs> well, apparently they like sheephead. Actually kind of glad I spent some time grabbing bait this morning, otherwise I feel like I'd be out of bait sooner than later. Alright, so all the sheep's head that I had is now gone. We're going to see if uh, catfish will eat green sunfish. Last time, the only thing that was eating these were like bass and northern. Okay, injured it good so I can't swim away. Get some of that blood into the water. See, see who eats it. Something's hitting it. There we go. Oh, get out of those rocks. Oh, what was that? I don't even know what that was. It was fighting really hard at first. And then it was swimming like all over the place. Not so much like a catfish. I have no idea what that could have been. Okay, green sunfish number two. Something's down there beating them up. Oh. He's got him. How? I understand. How are they getting off? Ugh. Gain some fish number four. That was a good hit. Oh, I don't understand. I got, I felt that one pop out of his mouth because it was in there. Okay, green sunfish number five. Somebody down there is getting fed really well. <laughs> Gonna try reeling into this guy. I think he finally got it. He had it. I don't know how they swim with it and then the hook. I don't get the hook. I don't understand that. Okay, so I keep losing my bait. And I don't know how they're picking it up and not getting the hook at all. So I'm going to start using really small chunks and see if I can still get the bites. How are you not getting hooked up? Gotcha. <laughs> he was pecking at it. There's a perfect eater right there. One nice clean kitty. I didn't think it'd be that hard to catch these guys today. 
finally. <laughs> so that's one. Ugh. I only want three of them. So like, I'm just gonna clean three of them. I'm gonna turn them into catfish nuggets. I'm gonna have a good fish fry. But geez, it took me forever. And I had to feed like, I think I went through five green sunfish, five? Yeah, pretty sure I went through five. That was the head of a, of a pumpkin seed. So I have chunks of that. I'm gonna stick with the smaller chunks because it seems like the only way I'm gonna get hooked up. Okay, sticking with the chunks, like I said. That'll make my bait last longer too, so. Just let that guy hook himself. <laughs> Not a catfish. <laughs> well, that explains why it was so hard to catch those catfish, because <laughs> they were northern pike. But it, there might be other fish down there too. But go figure. Fresh cut bait, and the northern pike hits it. All right, I'm gonna try to get down, uh, fish a little bit longer here so I don't get stormed on. It's supposed to storm. And uh, yeah, I still want more catfish. I have one. Hardest fish to hold on to in North America. Giant bowfin. <clears throat> try and get a release on this slimy bugger. There we go. Finally. Oh. That might be too small. I mean, he's got meat on him, but I just feel wrong killing. He's only like 13, 14 inches long. All right, guys. Uh, yeah, so I'm home, and it's actually the next day. I just got done working out, and uh, <laughs> I forgot. So. I put him in the freezer 
well not the freezer so in that fridge it's like broken so the bottom of the fridge actually gets like just above freezing so like 30 degrees or something uh, even if I turn up the fridge so uh, I put it in there overnight because I was too tired to clean them when I got home uh, being lazy but um, I was gonna say I'm just gonna go over real quick how I'm gonna clean this thing uh, it's not that big and I planned on catching a couple of them uh, to make a like a fish fry like a you know a couple different things but uh, this one's big enough I mean it's about 14 inches it's big enough for me to have some like catfish nuggets so I'm just gonna do some catfish like Cajun catfish nuggets and I'll show you guys how to do that real quick but I'm gonna try to set the camera up so you guys can see how I clean this thing um, I'm gonna basically l let me just show you with my finger like I'll describe with like pointing at it and stuff so you guys can kind of see it and then I'll try to get it on film for you okay so with catfish a lot of people do this thing where they just like they go from like that dorsal and they just cut down to like the back of their ribs you can actually see their ribs right here um see how it's smooth and then it becomes jagged the ribs on catfish are like this so you can clean a catfish like you would a normal fish you can go down cut down and around the ribs there and then you get that chunk of meat and then everything from there back. I know a lot of guys are real lazy and they just go from here back because it's easier for them to do. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut at this angle right here. So you end up with like a straight line from here to the top, bottom of the ribs, from the top of the ribs to the bottom of the ribs. And then uh, by doing that, it's easier to clean down along the rib cage there. So you just do the same thing. You clean down, cut along, pop it through, and then cut the rest off. Uh, and I'll show you guys when I'm done, but some people don't like eating catfish in the summertime So I bled him out in the water. So I cut his gills right away when I caught him And then what I'm gonna do as soon as I'm done cleaning it and uh, taking the skin off that is salt water with ice in it uh, a lot of people wonder why I have that set up it basically gets all the fishy taste out of catfish uh, or any fish for that matter. I do this with everything I keep and clean. Um, so there's about a tablespoon or a teaspoon of salt mixed in with the ice and some cold water and then I mix it up real good. Uh, that firms up the meat really good and then this is gonna actually be a two-part video because I'm gonna eat this guy tomorrow. Uh, I'm gonna make a, make a whole dinner with him. And uh, this, you can keep the fish in here for like two, three days in the fridge and it won't go bad or anything like that. So that's another reason I do it is like if I don't feel like eating the fish right away. Okay, so I'm gonna try to clean this guy and get it done real quick. Uh, like I said, I would show you guys like the whole process, but I don't know how YouTube is anymore. Uh, I don't know if they're gonna get mad cause like gore and all that blood and stuff like that. In theory, since I've let him out, there shouldn't be any blood in this fish. So. Hopefully it's clean. I'll show you guys uh, like in between process here and then I'll show you what I do uh, to get it ready to cook. And then I'm gonna show you guys how I cook it tomorrow. Okay, I'm gonna just show you this part. Hopefully YouTube's not stupid and demonetizes this video. Guys, comment below if you guys wanna see me show you guys more of this stuff. I kind of butchered a little bit. It's been a while since I cleaned a catfish, but I mean, this is really simple and I should be able to explain it to you. Okay, so. I'll put them back together. So, <laughs> simply put, I cut down right here, and then I do the same thing, cut along the ribs. You go to the back of the ribs, push it through, run along the backbone. It's that simple. Uh, it's a little hard because he's frozen and these stupid things stay stuck out. <laughs> so, like, that's what you get for, like, retraction. Uh, so when you're doing it on the side. And I always do both sides of a fish first before I actually cut them off. So I'll cut this one off next. Uh, come up. I'll, you know, basically, you just follow the ribs along, come up to here, and then pull it off. And then I'll show you guys the aftermath of that. But there's no blood. <laughs> so this should be pretty simple for you guys. But like I said, you, I can show you, like, the meat's real clear because I bled them out. And then I can show you how big he is. You know, that's about... About 14, 15 inches long. Okay, so like I was saying, a lot of people, what a lot of people do here, so this is what you end up with if you do it my way. So this is from the back of the head. You get this little strip up here. Um, and this is just jagged because I just, you know, just trim along the rib cage coming down. A lot of people waste from here forward. So this is the, where the ribs start. 
and they just cut like this and then take that off so I don't know about you guys but that's one nugget and a half another nugget and a half <laughs> so three like that and those two for me would be like I would put that on a sandwich or something like that so that's a waste of a lot of food if you just cut from their back I understand if you're cleaning like 10 15 channel cappers or something like that at a time and then on top of that I wanted to show you show everybody I'll try to get out of the light see how white this meat is that's why you bleed your fish uh, all you catfishermen out there uh, comment below if you bleed your fish or not and if you don't tell me this is not cleaner than the other way so now I'm gonna take and float my knife off the skin here and clean this off real nicely and then I'm gonna turn them right into nuggets and put them in there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these and when I take them off the skin right away when I put them in here to firm them up individually I'm gonna cut like this here I'll cut this down the middle I'll turn that into a nugget that into a nugget nugget and this end nugget so one two three four five six six there'll be 12 nuggets out of this one 15 inch fish that's enough to feed me and i'm over a 200 pound man so keep that in mind when you're cleaning your fish and like how wasteful you are and like whether or not you should be doing it or not so i'm gonna get that done and then i'll uh let you know how things go all right it's the next day uh just i'm gonna go over the basis of what i'm coating my fish in uh, you guys can use whatever you want. Uh, I'd like to call them catfish or Cajun catfish nuggets is what I'm going to call them. Um, something simple like, you know, this is the back 40 from Fleet Farm. Um, I like using panko or what's the other stuff? I have it up here. Oh, shore lunch. So shore lunch, Cajun style. I like Cajun, uh, the Cajun flavoring anyways, but so what is in my mix here if we can get it to focus on that probably not because it's so bright um so i have just i added panko breadcrumbs and cornmeal uh this already has some of that stuff in it it's kind of a crunchy one but the whole point here is like i was showing you guys before they're just little nuggets um basically the one fish will be enough for the two of us to eat and uh what I'm going to do here, well, this is heating up, so something you guys should all invest in, because I see a lot of people just, like, guessing how hot the oil is, is a, is a grease thermometer or an oil thermometer. Um, the best temp that I've come across to cooking, like, is between 350 and, like, 3, I think it's 370 yeah like 375 is like the highest you'd want to go uh any higher than that um you get a flash point and you can burn the house down so um but yeah it makes it so that like something as thin as the catfish that i have is basically going to make it so you only have to cook it for like i don't know it's probably going to be in there at a maximum for like three to four minutes maybe five minutes it's pretty quick um and then something a tip for all you guys when you're making fish if you're making them like this and you want to keep everything warm as I put a cookie sheet on top of the other burners and I put that on low um, so I can take the fish out put it on there and then it stays it stays warm while you're getting the rest of your fish made um, another tip take and bread all your fish so mine is gonna be fish into milk milk into breading uh, get it get it coated good and then I'm gonna set it aside in here until everything is breaded and then Once it's warm enough, then you can kind of take and use your hand and put it all in there at the same time But keep in mind the more fish you put into oil the more it cools down So as it's cooking it actually cools the oil down so you might have to turn the temp up But another thing is is you don't want uh, You don't want to heat up your oil too fast. So I'm gonna do all this, uh, get it cooked up, and then I'll show you guys afterwards what it looks like. Okay, so got everything breaded, put it in there, and that is gonna be too hot pretty soon here, so I'm gonna put it all in right away.
and there you have it. So, you have four pieces. Yeah, potato salad and coleslaw. All right, so I'm gonna enjoy these fish. I know they're gonna be good. Uh, they're super crunchy, crispy, and that, that's kind of what I wanted to show you guys is, you know, how I make mine. So if you guys are looking for some catfish nuggets and you want them to be crunchy and stuff like that, do it this way. You guys won't be disappointed. You can use any breading you want. Um, doesn't really matter, but uh, Cajun is the way I do it and it tastes really good, so. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's little catch and cook. It took three days to put together. <laughs> uh, hopefully you guys learned a little bit of something and get some good food out of it. Obviously, if you're not new here, you know what's up. But if you are new, could you please just remember to...